Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. This is another program, an edition of Experts. It has been normal that in the past, our parents, especially mothers, had that knowledge of breastfeeding their children up to six months. But nowadays, they call it modernization or globalization. Mothers who are workers or civil servants today had it take time to breastfeed their children. For that reason, they go in for artificial milk and that may have some consequences later on their babies. Today, we are going to talk about breastfeeding and nutrition. We have an expert, an Australian, who is a specialist, an educator. He's right here with us to tell us more about the consequences of not breastfeeding our babies. He is no other person than Madame Bindi Buck. Good afternoon, Madam. Good afternoon. So how are you today? Fine, thank you. We are happy having you here on our program today. Thank you so much for having me. So who is Madame Bindi Buck? So I am, as you said, an Australian. Yeah. I'm a breastfeeding counsellor and educator. So for the past 10 or 12 years, I have been working with mothers and babies to support their breastfeeding and to educate them about breastfeeding. And I'm also actually uh, doing my doctorate in infant and young child feeding, so particularly the prevention of malnutrition in children under two years. Okay, so when you talk about breastfeeding, what is breastfeeding? Well, breastfeeding is the way that all mammals feed their babies, and humans are mammals, okay. so we, f we produce milk and we feed that to our babies, and that is the normal way to feed a baby and the only perfect way to feed a baby. So what are the benefits of breastfeeding a baby? So, well, actually, can I turn that question around? Do you go ahead. And, and say, not breastfeeding is a risk. <laughs> so, there are risks to not breastfeeding a baby. As I said, breastfeeding is the normal way to feed a baby, the only perfect way to feed a baby. Babies under six months have digestive systems that are immature, and the only food that they can digest and that is perfect for them is their mother's breast milk. So not giving breast milk is a risk. It can be a risk in the short term for their health and even for mortality and in the long term. So in the short term, babies that aren't breastfed are more likely to get infections, to get sick. And in the long term, they're more likely to have diseases like obesity, uh, heart diseases, diabetes and cancers. So you're talking of the effects of not breastfeeding a baby. Mm -hmm. All these diseases for a baby. That's so right. what are the side effects for a woman who is not breastfeeding a baby? Thank you. You learn very quickly. We don't <laughs> say the benefits. We say the effects. a woman's body is made to breastfeed. Okay. And not breastfeeding is a risk for a woman too. Uh, in the sh again, in the short term, the risk is that she will, after the birth, bleed more than she should. And in the long term, she also has the risk of obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and some cancers like breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So not breastfeeding increases a woman's risk for those things. In parallel, you are telling me that if a woman continues breastfeeding a child, the risk of having a breast cancer is reduced. That's correct, yes. And both the risks for a mother and a child are what we call dose-related. So the longer the mother breastfeeds and the longer the baby is breastfed, the lower and lower their risk is. Can every woman breastfeed a child? Practically every woman can breastfeed. And I would say, particularly here in Cameroon, I would say practically every woman can breastfeed. Any woman who can have a baby, who can conceive a baby and carry a baby to full term, has all of the hormones and everything that she needs then to produce breast milk and to breastfeed. In my experience as a breastfeeding counsellor, the only thing that 
I begin to see that makes it difficult to breastfeed is breast surgery, breast enlargement surgery mm -hmm. or breast reduction surgery. So if anybody, I don't think that's common in Cameroon yet, no. um, but if anybody was considering it, wait until you've finished breastfeeding your babies to have breast surgery. <laughs> but otherwise, any woman who can carry, conceive and carry a baby can then breastfeed it. And what about women who are who have children but uh, been discovered that they have uh, diseases like HIV and AIDS and hepatitis. Right, so um, women who have diseases like that, so mothers with HIV, um, there is a slight risk of passing HIV to their babies through their breast milk. Yeah. The bigger risk, of course, is passing uh, intrauterine or during the birth process. Yeah. But in Cameroon, I believe that every mother who presents for antenatal care is automatically tested for HIV. Yeah. If she's found to be seropositive, she starts her course of drugs and then when her baby's born, she's able to breastfeed while she's taking her ART drugs. So why, what are some of the difficulties that some women face while breastfeeding? Well, you know, the, the biggest difficulty that women face, I think, is a lack of confidence in their bodies. <laughs> yeah? Um, because, think about it, it doesn't make sense that your body can conceive a baby and grow a baby. Yeah. A miracle. And then this baby appears and you can't feed it. That would be crazy, right? That's biologically crazy. So. But many women don't trust their bodies, don't trust that their body will produce milk to breastfeed a baby. So lack of confidence is perhaps the first problem and lack of support and information is the other problem. The people around who say, oh, I think your breasts are too small or too large or your baby is too big or too small to breastfeed. So lack of support is the other big barrier to breastfeeding. There are some situations that you give birth and your breast doesn't flow. The breast of the mother doesn't flow. What can be the cause of that? Okay, so there are a couple of... Um, let's talk about how breast, uh, breast milk is made and how it comes out of the breast. So if you imagine that this... Can you see that? Yeah. That this is a breast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are two things. There is the supply. This is the supply of breast milk. Yeah. Yeah, which is in the breast. And then we have to get it out. So, first question, how is breast milk made? At first, breast milk is made after pregnancy. The hormones of pregnancy and birth tell our breasts, make milk. Okay. And in fact, in the beginning, most women make too much milk because their breasts have not yet figured out how much milk their baby needs. So at first, breast milk is governed by hormones, but over time, the baby communicates with the mother, with okay. the mother's breast, to say how much milk it wants. So after the first few weeks, it's the baby sucking and draining the breast that produces the breast milk. So that's one thing, producing it. The other thing is how do you get it out? Yeah, how do you get it out? Right. So, so this production is very biological. If the baby drains the breast, the breast will produce it. It's like a factory. If you owned a factory, um, making, I don't know, plastic glasses or something. If your warehouse was full of product, you would tell the factory stop producing. Yeah, right? that's true, that's true. Take a break, guys, because we have plenty of product. The breast is the same. When the breast is full, it decreases production. When the breast is emptied, it, the factory workers say, we must produce, we must produce. And so when the breast is drained, production happens. So the more you feed the baby, the more you produce. But then you have to get it out. And that's a very psychological process. If the mother is stressed, if she feels sick, if she feels tired, if she feels embarrassed, no, yeah. then it's like the bottle is closed. She might have plenty of milk, but nothing comes she's out. Fine, yeah? But if she's relaxed, feeling supported, feeling comfortable. It's like opening the bottle and... Yeah, it starts pouring. It starts pouring. So many women, if they're not 
seeing breast milk come out, think, I have no milk. Okay. The problem is probably that they're stressed or worried and that the milk's there, but it's just not coming out. So in that situation, what is the woman supposed to do? Relax. <laughs> yes. So just relaxation. You know, um, getting support, having the people around say, you can do it. Okay. I have confidence in you. Uh, if there's pain, as there sometimes is, right after birth, uh, taking care of the pain, maybe taking some paracetamol to reduce the pain. Um, but yeah, relaxing, getting plenty of rest, feeling good. Another really great thing is to be skin to skin with the baby. So if the mother takes off her shirt and takes the clothes off the baby and the skin is touching skin, that tells her breasts and her body, relax and make milk. Okay. So skin to skin, <coughs> no clothes on baby, no clothes on mum is a really good way to get that breast milk flowing. There is this tendency that uh, when you are breastfeeding and you leave your house, immediately the child starts crying, yeah. your breast starts flowing. How true is that? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I have a cousin who said it's not only when the baby starts crying, when my cat meows, my breast milk starts to flow. <laughs> so that's that very psychological effect. Okay. When your baby cries, that's its way of communicating, I need milk. Okay. And so your breasts say, here it is and they start sometimes to leak or even to spray. So that's true. And when you're not around? When you're not around. Yeah, and your baby's right and you're crying. And your baby's crying, yes. So, um, sometimes, so for example, women who are at work yeah. and want to provide breast milk for their babies. So they might express breast milk mm -hmm. to leave with the baby's carer they need some kind of stimulation. They might take a photo of their baby. Mm -hmm. uh, they might take some of their baby's clothes to smell. And that can stimulate the flow of their breast milk, if, if that's what they're trying to do, <laughs> to <laughs> extract, to pump breast milk. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Madame Bidi, Bob, let's just watch uh, this excerpt. You know, Cameroon mm -hmm. is respecting the checklists of the World Health Organization. Yes. So, one of the hospitals in Yaoundé, the Ganakolika Hospital in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. have done everything to ensure that the personals respect this checklist. Fantastic. Let's get this excerpt. Excellent. Kept by Otans Obono. step is at admission when the, the the woman level comes in upon admission you check you your, your checklist to see if there are some special conditions on this woman that you need to take care of for example elevated blood pressure is she HIV positive is there a, a malaria is there any other complication do you need to transfer this woman to another health, uh, health, health facility or not after the first step, the second step is when she is about to, 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 to deliver because we have specific things to do on a woman as the baby is coming out. So are those things ready? Do you have sterile gloves? Do you have the, 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 the sterile clamp to, 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 to clamp the cord of the baby? Do you have all the, the material to, to control bleeding in case of any bleeding? The fourth page of the checklist is the hour that follows childbirth. There are various questions. Is this woman's blood pressure normal? Is she, is she bleeding normally or abnormally? And if she's bleeding abnormally, there are spe specific instructions on the checklist of what to do. So the checklist, the fourth page is when the woman has stayed in her maternity and is about to leave the hospital. Thanks very much, Otans Obono, for that wonderful except cats. That was Dr. Dobit Sama talking. He's a uh, gynecologist of the Yaoundé Gynecologist and Obstetric Hospital in Goso. So, viewers of Seven News Television, if you're just switching on your television sets, this is your program known as Experts. Today we are talking of sensitive topic, breastfeeding and nutrition. With us, we have Madame Bidi Bok, who is a breastfeeding counselor and an educator. Madam, you've just followed that report or the excerpt 
of Dr. Dobitz. The checklist yes. of the World Health Organization. Yes. Is it something we have to respect? Absolutely. Uh, World Health Organization has done a great job of um, outlining how to support women to breastfeed. And, and the Ministry of Health here in Cameroon has also done a great job. Uh, they have um, a, a unit called the Infant and Young Child Feeding Unit in the Food and Nutrition Department of the Ministry of Health, and they do great work in supporting breastfeeding. So, as uh, Horton said, very important the period immediately after birth, mm. especially the first hour. So, one of World Health Organization's checkpoints is that the baby should breastfeed within the first hour of birth. Mm. In fact, I read a study recently that. Um, even in places like the UK, if this is not happening, babies are much more likely to get infections. So very important to have the baby with the mother immediately after birth, not separated from the mother, not in a nursery, not in another bed, but lying right here on the mother's chest. So, Madame Bidi Bok, can you please tell us about the ABCs of breastfeeding? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so that is, in fact, the very first thing. Yeah. Is uh, immediately after birth, the baby should go on the mother. Okay. Now, we think babies are helpless. They're not so helpless. They need our help, but they have some reflexes that... That's true. Yeah, that can help them to survive. So, anyone who's had babies will notice that they kick their legs yeah. and that they turn their heads like this. The kicking legs is a way of stepping. If you put, and this is my baby, I don't know if you can see my funny baby. <laughs> if you put a baby here on the mum's tummy right after birth, the baby can crawl or walk up the mother's tummy to her breast that's true and then the baby starts to bounce i don't know if you can see that to bounce yeah. its head around looks very funny that's uh, true uh, uh, <laughs> and it turns its head trying to find the breast and when it finds it <laughs> it starts to feed so it's very important to let the baby help the mother by putting it putting the baby right here after birth so that they can begin to breastfeed within the first hour okay so that's message number one, A, B, that's A. A, B, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's A. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Something that I've noticed in new mothers is because they don't see milk coming out, they get worried that they have no milk. It's very important to know that the first milk is a kind of magic milk. It's called colostrum. Good. And it does not come in large amounts it comes in very small amounts looks a little bit funny it's yellow but it's very powerful and that's another reason that baby in the first hour should start drinking to get that colostrum which is full of antibodies to give the baby immunity full of fat and protein to get the baby a good start on life so for the first few days, a mother won't see milk coming. It's only after a few days that the milk starts, starts to come. Flowing. But she should trust that like magic, it's invisible, the milk is there, the colostrum is there, and it's very, very precious. Okay, so are you done with the ABCs? Uh, <laughs> those are the important things. That's a really important thing, actually. So starting well, breastfeed within the first hour. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, there is this tendency in Africa, especially in Cameroon, uh, some tradition holds it that if your breast milk is not flowing, you ought to take something like a uh, buffet, a, a beer. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So how is the breast milk linked to the alcohol that people are taking? You know, it probably isn't exactly linked. <laughs> However, sometimes I think if you're taking a beer, maybe you feel relaxed and we have this, the milk is there, and when you relax, it starts it to starts flow. Worrying. I guess. It's not about production. Okay. Uh, and it's certainly not necessary. 
Um, some people are worried about alcohol and breastfeeding. It's true that you shouldn't drink too much when you're breastfeeding, but alcohol goes into the breast milk in the same way that it goes into our blood. So you can drink a little bit, but not too much. Okay, fine. What are the breastfeeding positions a mother should take in order the breast milk should flow fluently? Ah, well, why don't you show me? How would you breastfeed a baby? <laughs> how do you think you should hold a baby to breastfeed it? I am a man, so I don't know how ah, to do Ah, okay. Many people, <laughs> many people think that you should hold a baby like this, which is the position that bottle feeding happens in. Okay. That's not the position for breastfeeding. Imagine if I asked you to drink a drink, but I put your glass here. It's very hard. Yes, difficult, difficult. What you need to do is to put the baby's nose pointing to the nipple and the baby's chest on your chest. So you turn the baby this way. That is the position. Baby must not have its head turned to the side because that makes it very difficult, difficult. to drink. And that's important in the beginning. Okay. So you can use this position. You can also use this position. But over time, mothers and babies learn very well, and then they find a position that works for them. So how many breastfeeding positions do we have? Well, you know, for new babies, we can feed in this direction or this direction. Okay. Sometimes we can lie back on our pillows or on our bed and feed that way. The most important thing is that it works that it's comfortable for you, comfortable for the baby, and that it works. We are talking about breastfeeding and nutrition, mm -hmm. okay? What are the type of foods we ought to eat, or a mother has to eat, in order that her breast should be flowing normally? Uh, there are no special foods that produce breast milk. Every culture, every place will say, uh, drink beer or eat this and that will help your breast milk that's not accurate okay. good nutrition is all a mother needs healthy nutrition uh, plenty of fruit and vegetables um, a little bit of fat a little bit of protein so just healthy nutrition there's nothing that's bad for breast milk either um, coffee can sometimes or anything with caffeine coffee coke chocolate tea can sometimes pass through the breast milk to the baby, and just as it can excite an adult, it can excite a baby. But there's nothing that you must or mustn't eat when you're breastfeeding. We were talking about stress and worries. Mm. What should a mother do to overcome stress when she is breastfeeding a baby? Yeah, so the miraculous thing about babies and breastfeeding is that babies themselves are often stress relievers. So you know I said taking off your shirt, taking off your baby's clothes, and just being together skin to skin is very relaxing, profoundly relaxing right. for the baby and for the mother. So that's already uh, one stress relief. The other things to do are to make sure even before you have your baby that people are going to support your choice to breastfeed, particularly your partner, the father of the child or your partner is very important in a woman's breastfeeding success. So is her mother and her mother-in-law. They are very important people to support breastfeeding. Are there some medical considerations in breastfeeding? You know, there are very few medical considerations. Uh, Dr. Hortense mentioned checking for HIV. Yeah. Very important during pregnancy. Um, if it's discovered that a mother is seropositive, then she can begin her ART drugs and then she can breastfeed her baby. Okay. Um, some other diseases like hepatitis, um, the child can be vaccinated if it's known that a mother has hepatitis then the protocol is to vaccinate the child and continue to breastfeed there is never a time when you would say don't breastfeed, breastfeed. that's very important breastfeeding is, is, is so important that we can overcome any other medical difficulties to do it 
Nowadays, most women, they call themselves civil servants or workers. Mm -hmm. They are no longer housewives. Yeah. And they don't have that time to breastfeed their child. Yeah. As a specialist, what do you advise them to do? So, I would say when you know you are pregnant, get to know the law. Um, I'm not very familiar with the law in Cameroon, yeah. but I guess that uh, there is a maternity leave. Um, do, how long is maternity leave in Cameroon? Do oh, you know? it depends. Maternity leave depends, I think, on the companies. Some yes. companies might decide to give you three months, others mm -hmm. might decide to give you two, others might decide to give you one. Ah, so yeah. there is that law, but mm -hmm. highly respected. Yes. Companies decide on what to do. Yes. So that's a conversation to begin having with your workplace. Okay. How much maternity leave do I have? Am I going to be allowed to take it? Yeah. The second thing is when you come back to work, I think in Cameroon you have at least an hour a day for a lactation break, yeah. a breastfeeding know, break. Yeah. So you can use that to actually breastfeed your baby. Maybe someone can bring the baby to your work or maybe you can go oh, home well, to your yeah. baby. Or you can use it to express or to pump breast milk that you can then leave with the person who is caring for your baby. Okay, what are the common challenges with breastfeeding? I think some of the common challenges are that um, many people don't think about it until they have a baby in their arms. So many people focus on the birth, which is a very big deal, <laughs> but they don't really prepare so one of the challenges is that suddenly you have a baby crying in your arms and you're not sure what to do. What to do. So very important, just as you do your antenatal visits to your clinic, mm. get prepared for breastfeeding. Talk to other mothers. Hold some babies. Um, think about how you will breastfeed. Learn about breastfeeding. A second challenge is, of course, that uh, breastfeeding if you've never done it before, may be a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> um, for some people, it can be very uncomfortable. All right. Often that's a matter of getting position right, getting baby's mouth opened, really opened correctly. So often that discomfort that might happen in the beginning goes away with a little bit of time. But if you're finding that the discomfort continues, then get some help from an experienced mother from a midwife, from someone who can help you with breastfeeding. Madam Bog, out of curiosity, can another woman breastfeed a child that doesn't belong to her? Absolutely. Absolutely. The World Health Organization, when it talks about the preferences for feeding a child, preference number one is that the baby is fed by its biological mother Mother's. from her breast. Mm -hmm. Preference number two, if the biological mother is sick or at work, that the baby is fed with her milk from a cup, actually, not a bottle, but a cup. a cup. Preference number three is that the baby is fed by another woman from that woman's breast. Number four is another woman's milk from a cup. And then right at the bottom of the preferences is infant formula or a breast milk substitute. So certainly other women can breastfeed a baby that they did not give birth to. I think that's probably common in Cameroon, yeah. or it was in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's common, sure. It's common. And you know, uh, definitely that would. It's preferable to have another woman feed your baby than to feed it infant formula. For sure, it's much healthier. You are talking about infant formula. Mm -hmm. People out there don't really understand mm. what is. Is it all about infant formula? Can you be explicit to let our viewers know what is it? Yes. So infant formula has been around for about a hundred years. Yeah. At the time that our dairy industries began to expand and we needed somewhere to use this milk, we saw a market in babies and mothers. So infant formula is usually based on cow's milk. Cow's milk is good for baby cows okay. but if you have a baby human that baby needs human milk cow's milk is not good for baby humans <laughs> unless you want a baby cow so it's mostly cow's milk 
but it's also other very strange things lots of sugar lots of chemicals, chemicals. so it's not an ideal choice for babies it poses a risk and unfortunately one of the things that people often don't realize is that it is not a sterile product it can be contaminated and i think you probably know about some uh, news recently yeah. <coughs> yeah what's happened in france exactly okay so recently in france there was a very big problem a very big scandal at a company called lactalis the products made by lactalis including their infant formula had a bacteria called salmonella which can be deadly okay in fact the ministry of trade here in cameroon just in the last couple of weeks has recalled 47 tons of lactalis products and destroyed them so the ministry of trade has done a great job dealing with that lactalis problem they've recalled and destroyed those products nevertheless infant formula is not sterile it can contain bacteria it can contain contaminants and of course the water we mix it with can contain bacteria and contaminants thank you very much madame Berg. viewers of seven news television we are talking about checklists carol Tepa, who is one of our reporters here had a report made concerning the checklists prescribed by the world health organization Tepa carol let's get what you have for us this afternoon Personnel de santé, religieuses et autorités administratives, tous réunis ici dans cette salle à l'occasion de la quatrième édition du café intellectuel organisé par l'hôpital gynéco-obstétrique de Yaoundé. Une rencontre dont les débats portaient sur la réduction de la mortalité maternelle et néonatale. Les professionnels de la santé, dans leurs exposés, ont présenté aux participants la checklist qui permet à la femme enceinte d'avoir un accouchement sécurisé et dont l'importance est démontrée ici. Cette checklist, elle est utilisée au niveau de la maternité. Donc quand une dame vient pour accoucher, on a besoin de, ce, de cette liste-là, donc de cette checklist. Et à travers cela, le personnel travaille beaucoup plus sereinement et on a tous les éléments qu'il faut pour pouvoir rapidement prendre en charge s'il y a un souci. Conçu par l'Organisation mondiale de la santé et utilisé par l'hôpital hygiénico selon le contexte camerounais, la checklist qui regroupe tout un ensemble de matériel propice pour la santé de la mère et de l'enfant, exemple le patient de tout frais, chose que le gynécologue de l'hôpital d'Ongousso tente d'expliquer. La checklist n'a pas de coût. La checklist est un instrument de travail pour le personnel, donc le, 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 le démarrage ne paye aucun coût. Par contre, notre hôpital euh, fonctionne dans un régime financier qui est le financement basé sur la, la performance. Donc l'utilisation de checklist sera donc considérée comme un indicateur de qualité de soins. Le personnel médical de cette institution sanitaire aura donc avec beaucoup d'intérêt pris part à ce café pour améliorer la qualité des soins des patients socle sur lequel repose le fonctionnement de l'hôpital. Sorry for the mix-up, viewers of 7 News Television, that report was made by Stephanie Agnew, not Carol Taper. Viewers of 7 News Television, if you are just switching on your TV set, this is your program known as Experts. We are talking about breastfeeding and nutrition, and experts who is a counselor, an educator on breastfeeding, is here with us, Madame Bidin Bok. Madame Bidin, you just followed that report by Stephanie Anio talking about checklists. Mm -hmm. You were saying something about World Health Organization and the checklist. Yes. Uh, one of the pictures that you saw there, I was very happy to see this, what they called La Méthode Kangaroo. Uh, Especially, kangaroo method. especially for <laughs> yeah. an Australian, right? Yeah, the kangaroo it's, method. <laughs> exactly, Got kangaroo it. method. So that is what we've been mentioning, this skin to yeah. skin. You know, babies, no, it's very interesting. If you know kangaroos that come from my country, Australia, yeah. they are very strange. They live in a pouch mm -hmm. of the mother's skin. That's where they live. And birds live in trees and fish live in water and babies 
should live here on the mother's chest. And that's what they refer to with kangaroo care. Keep your baby here, skin to skin if possible. It keeps warm, its respiration, its breathing, its heart rate are all perfect and it has very easy access to the breast. So let's talk about breastfeeding. How can we breastfeed a premature child? Breastfeeding is very important for premature babies, for all babies, but especially for premature babies. Mm. The gut forms slowly. The cells of the gut are very porous and permeable. They only grow together over time. Until they're grown together, they let things pass through. Some things are supposed to pass, some things aren't. So a premature baby's gut cells have wide open spaces. They need to have the perfect food. And mothers begin often producing colostrum even from the 16th week of pregnancy. They may not see it. Some mothers do see it. Some mothers find that they have little spots, spots yeah. and their clothes stick to them. Mm. That's colostrum being produced even before the baby's born. So in the case of premature babies, it is vital to give them that colostrum. But the babies are always kept in incubator. How is the mother going to, to feed them? Yes, well, it's very interesting. Um, studies have been done comparing the outcomes for babies doing kangaroo care versus incubators. And particularly for babies that are not very premature, Kangaroo care can sometimes have better outcomes than incubators. Even if a baby is so sick and so premature that it needs sometimes to be in an incubator, uh, these days we're starting to take it out to put on the mother's chest as much as possible. So even if the baby has tubes into its nose or its mouth or other tubes, ideally if it can come out and be on its mother's chest, then it is really in the best place for it. So it can be hard with premature babies. Some mothers even express milk that is fed to their baby yeah. through a tube. And it's just very important to support that and to help a mother to do that. Breastfeeding in Africa, at times people do say, when you have your baby, you have to be for six months, one year before meeting with your husband. And that is something that some men consider it as a taboo. How true or how perfect is that? Does having a sexual relationship with your husband disturb breast from flowing or destroy the breast milk from the mother? In fact, it's, n I'm sorry to say, it's not at all true. And it must be very frustrating for husbands and for wives to feel that they have to choose between the baby's health and their sexual life. Yeah. So. Uh, sex does not do any harm to breast milk. I suspect that this idea was to help a woman to recover from the birth mm -hmm. and also to avoid becoming pregnant again, again. too soon. So, <laughs> in the past, when there weren't contraceptives, I suspect it was a very helpful way of uh, ensuring that that baby got at least six months or years of breastfeeding before the mother became pregnant again. Okay. Yeah. But now we have contraceptives. We don't need to worry about that so much. We are talking about breast milk here, Madame Bindi Bong. How can a mother avoid breast infection? Yeah, breast infections are not too common. Um, the breast can become infected, or if the breast becomes infected, it's usually when there is some kind of crack uh, in the nipple, yeah? And those cracks are caused by poor positioning, poor attachment. You will notice that, a breastfeeding mother will notice uh, poor positioning because it will hurt. So very important to get positioning correct so that it's not hurting. Then you will not damage the nipples. However, sometimes it happens that um, a breast becomes infected and the best 
solution, the best cure is to feed the baby more. So to drain that infection and that milk that is sometimes blocked. So for example, sometimes people's clothes, a bra for example, can push a little bit or can be too tight and sometimes that can squeeze the milk duct, make it get inflamed, can block the milk. So the solution is get that milk out, feed the baby. The infection won't hurt the baby, okay. it'll be fine for the baby. Get the milk out. If it's too uncomfortable to feed the baby, then get the milk out by yourself with your hand under warm water, put warm things on the breast, get that milk out. That's the solution. Under no circumstances, if you have a breast infection, do not stop feeding because the infection will get worse. Can breastfeeding avoid or prevent pediatric overweight? Absolutely. We are just starting to learn that not breastfeeding increases the risk of children's obesity in childhood and later in life. Mm -hmm. So breastfeeding in a, in a variety of ways is very important for children and the adults that they become to maintain a healthy weight. Part of it is because it's the perfect food. We said earlier that infant formula is full of sugar and cow's milk and things that are made for cows, not babies. Um, so part of it is that breast milk is the perfect food, but also in breastfeeding, babies decide themselves when they've had enough. When they are not hungry anymore, they stop feeding. When we are feeding a baby with a bottle, we tend to feed it too much and the baby does not learn that its hunger is satisfied. satisfied. So it tends to become a child and an adult that eats too much too. And that also has a taste for all of that sugar that was in infant formula. So breastfeeding can really help prevent both overweight and underweight. It's the perfect food. Thanks very much once again, uh, Madame Bog, for coming to Seven News. Viewers of Seven News, this program is moving gradually to the close. But before we do that, we have a report made by a journalist talking about checklists. Medics are doing everything to prevent. Improving quality care on pregnant women so as to reduce maternal mortality and neonatal deaths since delivering remains a complex process with enormous risk, the World Health Organization has prescribed a childbirth checklist for safe delivery. Thanks to this checklist, the risk of losing pregnant women during delivery is limited as the first steps designed is respected to the latter. It has been proven worldwide by WHO that the checklist ensures completeness of care. The checklist is a secure, is a tool that helps to help person apply adequate treatment following the service protocol at the correct time. The pregnancy period of a woman, which is not an accident, should be taken seriously. Thus, each personnel working in the health sector or hospital, like the doctors, midwives, nurses, lab technicians, and pharmacists, are concerned with a checklist in order to ensure that things are put correctly so as to avoid maternal mortality. Everybody from those in charge of the pregnant woman to the pediatrician, to the blood bank, to the laboratory, to the pharmacy. Why not even the administration? Is my hospital capable to do what, to, to, to accomplish my missions? I think everybody is at his or her level. They know the things that they have to do. There is a need for a person's consent to prepare beforehand the coming of the newborn baby. It is true, preparing for the coming of the newborn baby is important. 
viewers of seven news television we are getting to the end of this program if you are just switching on your tv sets we are talking about breastfeeding and nutrition and experts in breastfeeding and education is here with us madam bidding buck madam bidding buck breastfeeding is something important so we just followed that report by the reporter of seven news television the various steps everybody is involved in the checklist by the world health organization so what do you have to say about it yes you know as you said preparation is very important getting the information getting the support ensuring that the hospital everybody in the clinic or the hospital supports breastfeeding understands that that's the proper way to feed a baby so in your report you saw pictures of mothers lying with their babies it's so important you can't breastfeed if your baby is somewhere else <laughs> That's true. so breastfeeding within the first hour close contact between the mother and baby will give the mother and baby a good start to breastfeeding then what we want to see is that they continue to breastfeed exclusively that means with no other food or drink until they are at least six months at around six months their tummies their digestive systems become ready gut. to try other foods but they try them slowly <laughs> so breast milk remains an important or the major part of a child's diet until it's one year old and we should continue breastfeeding our children until at least two years the World Health Organization tells us and for longer if the mother and the baby both want is there partial breastfeeding partial breastfeeding some people do partially breastfeed by which they mean that they mix some infant formula and some breastfeeding yeah. and certainly that is better than no breastfeeding but it's not as good as full breastfeeding <laughs> as exclusive breastfeeding after six months all breastfeeding will be partial breastfeeding because children begin Between. to eat and drink other things but until six months the healthiest and best thing for a baby is its mother's milk um, if a mother absolutely can't for reasons of work usually fully breastfeed her baby if a mother can't express breast milk at work if she doesn't have a sister or a mother or a friend who can breastfeed the baby when she's at work then she may find that she has to partially breastfeed but it's much better to continue breastfeeding as much as possible let's talk about inverted nipples what is inverted nipples yes inverted nipples are very uncommon actually <laughs> many people when they look at their nipples think oh these are very flat maybe they're inverted the way to find if you really have inverted nipples is to take a piece of ice and put it on your nipple okay if your nipples are really inverted well okay normal nipples will point out when they get cold yeah, yeah? really inverted nipples will point in, in yeah. and it's very uncommon some people have quite flat nipples and they worry that they will not be able to feed their baby but most people's nipples as they start to feed their baby start to stretch and and most babies can manage to stretch their mother's nipples out women with inverted nipples can still breastfeed but they often need a little bit of help you were talking about breast cracks yes so can you give us a little bit of idea about breast crack yes and how can it be avoided yes so avoiding uh, damage to the nipples is very important for the mother the baby will continue feeding happily but cracks in the nipple damage to the nipple can be very uncomfortable and they can be a way that infection can get into the nipple so we want to avoid them correct positioning and correct attachment of the baby is the way to avoid it and correct attachment means this if you put your thumb in your mouth you will feel that you have a palate the top of your mouth the yeah. roof of your mouth is hard 
if you put your finger back far enough, you find that it becomes soft. Mm. That's where we want the nipple to go in the baby's mouth. We want the nipple to go all the way back to the soft part. Because if it's in the hard part, the baby is going, I'm, I'm, I'm chomping the nipple between the hard palate and the baby's, the baby's tongue. tongue. That's very painful. So we want the baby to open its mouth really wide so that we get lots of breast, not just nipple, but actually the whole brown area into the baby's mouth so that it's pulled right back to the soft part. Thanks very much, Madame Bidimbok, for coming. Thank you. It's been I a pleasure. I believe next time you're going to come to tell us more about this. I would be very happy to. Okay. Viewers of 7 News Television, we have come to the end of this program, Experts. Don't go away. The one to make you understand is that whatever thing that has a beginning will definitely has an end. The reason why we are drawing the curtain close. May I remind you that the success of this program is not only thanks to your presenter, Takang Bison, but also to the technicians like Gay, the editors like Otanks Obono, and Roland Amana, Masia Kwakam, I thank you too, not to forget my able man here at the studio, Patrick. Viewers of Seven News Revolution, we have your experts coming tomorrow in French. But today, we have Club Elite Plus after this at 5 p.m. Thanks. God bless you. I love you all.